Hey guys, welcome to yet another video by Scalar. So this is another video on AWS basics. So in this particular session, we're going to cover how to create an EC2 Windows instance. So this particular series is basically to give you the basic knowledge about AWS and Azure and other cloud and other tutorials, basically to provide you these information so that you can just understand the basics and start with it. So it will be a short and crisp video on how to create an EC2 instance, especially in Windows instance. Okay, so before we start off this particular session, please make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos and also leave a like if you enjoy our content. Okay, so if you have any other queries, leave a comment down below and we would be addressing all of them. So now without any further delays, let's begin with it. Okay, guys, so we're going to start off with creating the EC2 Windows instance. So it's not anything tough. It's it's the same thing we've already done. So in the previous EC2 tutorial, which is available in our channel, I have created an EC2 instance, but it is a Linux instance, especially an Ubuntu instance. So in this particular session, I want to show you how to create an EC2 instance, but a Windows instance and how to log into the Windows instance. So that's going to be this particular session. It's going to be very straightforward. It's just the demo. So that's why we call it the basic session so that you could follow the exact uh, same thing which I'm doing right now and you can complete uh, or finish the demo by yourself. Okay. So I'm going to open EC2. Okay. So now let me go back to instances. Yeah. So now, okay. So first thing you'll have to do is obviously click launch instances. The only step which will be different at the beginning would be selecting the AMI. So instead of an Ubuntu instance or a Linux instance, you will be choosing a free tier Windows instance. So you can choose either this or either this. Go with the Microsoft Windows Server 2019 base. You can go with that or you can go with 2022 base or you can go with going down go with 2012 r2 base as well doesn't matter because all of them are free tier make sure you select the free tier ones because otherwise you would get charged for it so i'm going to select the 2019 base and click select done and i'm just going to go with the t2.micro only as it is free tier eligible and clicking on next so i just want one instance default vpc uh, no preference and auto assign public ip address enabled Okay, so this is basically I'm going to let this be default. I'm not going to change anything else. If you want to know more about VPC, just check out our VPC tutorial or our AWS architecture session. Uh, you'll get an even better idea about what exactly these are. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it default going to storage. Yep. So now root uh, slash dev. So it's going to be 30 uh, gigabytes. So if you see the previous tutorials, uh, the EC tutorial in our channel. So in that the size would be 8 GB. Okay, that the size would be 8 GB and in that particular tutorial why it's 8 GB because it's an Ubuntu instance and if you want to go ahead and check that particular tutorial the link will be provided here you can just go ahead and check it out but apart from that why is it 8 GB because the Ubuntu server doesn't need a lot of space to install the operating system of Ubuntu server or the files and all the things related to the Ubuntu server is not a huge bundle and it doesn't need a lot of space to store that so it comes under 8 GB. But when it comes to Windows, it's a little bigger uh, operating system because it's a GUI. It's a graphical user interface. When it came to the Ubuntu server, it's a command line interface. So command line interfaces will always have lesser storage so that the uh, installation files and the uh, operating system files, everything will be of smaller uh, size. That's why we were able to do it with an 8 GB. But when it comes to Windows, keep it 30 GB and that will be more than enough. And then next go to tags uh, again this is an optional step i'm just going to add it when windows security group uh, you can just leave rdp uh, when you do it for an uh, linux instance again this would be ssh right ssh in port number 22 but when you're logging into uh, windows instance you will have to use remote desktop okay so remote desktop has to be used that's why it's rdp okay and uh what else if if it's if you want every tra all traffic to be available you can click on all traffic but apart from that rdp is more than enough and one more thing let's say if you're uh, let's say you're launching the windows server and you're launching let's say sql server in your windows server and in that case you will have to allow so let's say it's postgresql or if you're going with mysql or aurora or if it's ms sql 
okay then you can select that and it will allow that particular network okay it will allow that particular port number and protocol so for now it's going to be rdp and let it be rdp okay so that's it you don't have to provide anything else so this is more than enough to log in into your windows instance so review and launch and uh, yeah so just review everything if everything is proper just click on launch and here select the key pair i want to select the key pair which i already have if you want to know how to create key pairs and how to use them just go ahead and check out uh, the previous tutorials as i told you the ac tutorial i'll be showing you how to create key pairs and uh, yeah so select the key pair which you have or if you do not have a key pair create one and provide it a name and download it and proceed so i'm just using the key pair which i already have tutorial key and launch instances so the windows instance is getting launched and uh, the windows uh, instance has a public ip it has a private ip uh, the instance state is currently pending because it's getting created and right now we can't connect to the instance so only when the instance the status checks are initializing then the connect option will show and then once it is two by two that basically means it's uh, ready to go but sometimes it'll take some time to go even though the instance is available so in that case you can just try to connect if it connects it's fine you can go ahead with it yeah so now it's showing running right so the instance is running so now let's check out the connection options clicking on connect so first one is session manager okay so we are not going to use the session manager uh, for that we'll have to install certain things and then there are two other options one is remote desktop file so this is exactly what we are going to do okay we are going to use the remote desktop and there is one more thing ec2 serial console this account is not authorized to use the ec2 serial console because it's a gui so if it's a graphical user interface when we use this it will automatically open one over here and we can start uh, working directly from the browser itself but as it's a gui as it's a graphical user interface we wouldn't be able to do that so for that particular purpose we'll have to use the remote desktop file so now uh, to get the password of the instance it's pretty simple just click on get password but again make sure you save your password uh, so this is your username this would be your password so right now you can't get it uh, so this particular window will be available and then you have provided the key right the i've selected tutorial key so now once the password is available you will have to decrypt it and once you decrypt it that's it you can just use the password and log in into your instance but before it's available let's just download the file and keep it ready so the windows.rdp file is available so now as this is a mac uh, pc i have this tool called microsoft remote desktop so this is what i'll be using okay so this is what i'll be using to connect to my windows instance but if you're already having a windows laptop in that case it will automatically have an rdp connection in windows so remote desktop will be already available okay windows desktop client it will be already available in your windows laptop so if you're connecting to a windows a remote uh, windows from your windows laptop it will already be available you can download the file and straight up click on it and it will open it okay and if you're using a linux let's say if you're using ubuntu but not the graphical uh, sorry not the command line user interface you cannot connect to it it should be a graphical user interface so if it's rdp for ubuntu then there are other types of rdps which are available which you can download and keep it ready okay so there are other tools which you can just uh, log in and keep it ready so rdp for ubuntu gui so there are so many uh, blogs you can just check it out download the relevant tool and keep it ready and that's more than enough okay now let's check it back let's click on get password yeah password is available so now to decrypt it you'll just have to upload your key pair which you selected so i'm clicking on browse and it's basically in my downloads part tutorial key selecting it opening it okay tutorial key is ready so now i will just click on decrypt and the password is available so just copy the password and then save it somewhere okay i'm just gonna save it over here
okay i'm just saving it here for now all right so now the file is ready uh, the instance is running and everything is ready to go we can connect to the instance we have the password and we have the username which is basically administrator and we also have downloaded the rdp file so just click on the rdp file it will open the relevant application yeah so you can see this right so it it's asking uh, we need to request microphone and camera access continue it's fine okay so now let me just make this bigger add pc so pc host name we can basically provide it like this as well public ip and then we can add it so it's user account ask when required so let it be okay we provided it so connect to an admin session swap mouse button is not required reconnect if the connection is dropped okay um i'm just going to remove this yeah okay so add it done so now let me click double click on it now it's asking for the password so it's administrator so it's user at domain or something like that so i'm just going to use it administrator okay and the password is the password which i just copied and continue and it's asking you're connected to the rdp host the certification uh, couldn't be verified back to the root certificate your connection may not be secure yeah it's fine configuring remote pc so again this would be this process would be a little bit different if you're using a windows laptop but the end product would be the same when you click on the rdp file it will open and you can provide in your uh, username and password and it will connect to the windows instance that part would be the same but the again once that was done the end product that is the windows laptop uh, windows pc would be the same so that's what is opening let's see and you can see i am in a windows pc okay in my mac you can see this right i'm using a windows pc in my mac so how am i doing it using the remote desktop connection and i have launched and i have launched a windows pc okay here you can see all the things you can use uh, everything over here and uh, so internet is connected okay so let me click on this okay let me just open this so there is this called server manager you can first open the server manager so uh, there is this local server so you can see right remote management is enabled windows desktop uh, defender firewall is enabled desktop is enabled ethernet okay yep everything is enabled and also let's check all servers so right now we have only one server running so that's why it is showing that one single server and one more thing which you'll have to look ahead is this part so use recommended security settings so do not choose this click on don't use recommended settings and click on ok so now ok so the thing is internet explorer would be very slow so first thing you'll have to do is download google chrome or edge according to your need so the thing is for now you can add this particular website so for example you can add this and it will open it so whatever website shows up you can add uh, add that particular website and it will let you to uh, work with it okay and then but when i open uh, google.com again it will ask me for a prompt so there is something which you can do you will have to basically disable this particular part where it's asking all this so that you will have to disable you will have to disable the internet part so that you will be able to download whatever you want okay so in order to do that just close this and again open 
manager go to the local server and then there is something called ie enhanced security configuration right just click on it and turn it off okay that's it so you'll just have to do this and now you can basically go to any website you want and now if i click on download chrome it wouldn't ask me anything to do for example let me open a new tab and try to open uh, like let's say twitter.com so usually if the uh, so usually when i type this it will usually ask me to add it to the list of secure websites but now as i disabled it it won't ask me to do that so as again it's a it's a free uh, tier instance it's a pretty uh, slow instance so you will have to kind of wait for it okay, let me do one thing let me just close this the uh, internet explorer so let me click on internet explorer again and now let me download google chrome accept and install and you can check the speed the internet of Amazon's data centers so you can see uh, this is a virtual instances speed which is 510 mbps which is pretty pretty high so I just wanted to show you guys that how would uh, the internet be in a data center of Amazon so now the uh, thing is installing so basically you can start using it like a regular Windows PC okay so now this is basically how you can launch a uh, Windows instance so I think it's understandable it's pretty simple uh, and uh, yeah I think anybody could do this by themselves if they try but again this is why we are making this basic series just follow through on whatever we are doing and you can basically do it and now Google Chrome is installed so now it will be a little faster for you to navigate through the server and installing the required softwares and uh, everything so yeah okay so uh, that's basically it guys then it's pretty same you can just click here and you can just shut down the instance or you can disconnect it so if you disconnect it it will just disconnect it from the instance instance will still be running so you can come back and just connect it via the remote desktop and it will automatically connect to you from wherever you left off but if you shut down it then it will shut down the instance okay so uh, it's not actually required you can just close it so I'm just gonna close this done okay so now you can delete the remote desktop connection from here if you want uh, so then you can click on connect once again and provide your uh, password and uh, username in order to connect so these are pcs and there are something called workspaces right now we don't have any but again so if you have any other remote desktop connections you can add all of them over here so you'll have multiple desktop connections and you have one application to log into all of them okay and then it's the same thing you can just delete it by clicking on terminate instance successfully terminated now you can't connect to this particular instance so it wouldn't connect because the instance got terminated yeah so you can just cancel it and you can just delete it and done yeah so this is basically it guys this is what i wanted to show you in this particular session i hope you understood how to create a windows instance using aws and how to install google chrome and then proceed with whatever you want to do with the instance so thanks so much meet you in another session